Hey nerd family and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about Peacock TV. So Peacock TV has been out for one year. We're going to take a look today and see if it's still worth it. Before we jump into today's video, I'm going to go ahead and roll that intro and I'll see you back here in a second. All right, guys, welcome back. As always, I hope everyone out there is staying safe and staying healthy. If you haven't already, make sure to check out thenerdcircle.com and make sure you're following on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real Nerd Circle. And go ahead and subscribe to this channel for more. So today we're just taking a little look at Peacock TV since it's now been out for one year. We're just taking a look to see if it's still a valid option for you to have in your arsenal of streaming services. Since we are still in the midst of the streaming wars, there's still a lot of options out there and we want to see if it's worth your money. If you guys would like to see a more deep dive into Peacock TV, we can definitely do a longer video and take a deeper dive into the behind the scenes with Peacock TV. Today we're just going to do a broad overview. So Peacock TV launched on July 15th of 2020. Now if you were a Xfinity customer you may have gotten it a little bit early depending on what program you had through Xfinity or Comcast. You may have gotten it a bit early but to the most of the public it did release on July 15th of 2020. So it has now been out for one year. Now it's owned by NBC Universal, which is owned by Comcast Xfinity. We can take a deeper look into that in a further video. Leave comments down below if you'd like us to take a deeper dive. So most of the content you're going to find on here is going to be NBC related. Now they do have some contracts with some third party companies to be able to get some more content on here, but most of the things you're going to see are going to be NBC Universal branded. Now one of the most important things to decide if you're going to keep a streaming service is definitely its cost. Now the first year I signed up I was able to get a promotion. I've been waiting to see if another promotion is going to come through my email and it does not seem like there is. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and pay the full price since I have a couple days left here. But getting into that price you do have three pricing options which does make this a bit different than some of the other platforms that are out there. You do have a free tier. So this is definitely a good option if you're trying to cut the cord on a budget. You can definitely get the free tier. You are going to have ads. It is ad supported to have the free tier, but you might as well try it out and see what kind of content it has if it's going to have anything that piques your interest. Now you're not going to get the full library with that free tier. Uh, you will get some of the originals that you can kind of test out, but it's not going to give you every single episode. You're not going to get all the live sports, and there's going to be a few other things that you miss. It's not going to have every single show and movie that they have on the premium tiers, but it's definitely a free option. It's definitely something for you to try. So if you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and jump on that free tier. Now you do have the option of going premium. What that premium is going to do is it's going to give you the live sports, it's going to give you the full library of all TV shows and movies that they have to offer, and it's going to give you all those originals. You are still going to have ads. It's not going to strip away those ads. But that premium tier is going to come in at $4.99 a month, or save yourself a little bit of extra money and you can do that $49.99 a year. So definitely try out that free tier. If you like what you see but you want to get a little bit more, jump on that premium. I'd say try to save yourself a little bit of money, pay that year up front, and go ahead and uh, save a few bucks there. Now if you do like that but you're just really struggling with those ads, you do have the option of doing the premium plus. That plus is going to strip away the ads, so you're going to pay an extra $5 a month or $50 a year. So if you go all in and you do that yearly price to save yourself a few bucks, you're going to be looking at $8.33 a month. So it's not horrible. I think it kind of comes in in the middle range price point if you're comparing some of these uh, cheap streaming services to some of the higher tier streaming services. So it definitely falls in the middle price point wise. But it is great that you have those three options. So if you're someone who doesn't care about having uh, a few commercials here and there, then just go ahead and do the, the premium tier. And it's just awesome that it does give you that free tier as an option. 
Now, if you are an Xfinity or Comcast customer, most likely they do give you that premium tier and you can just choose if you wanna pay the extra $50 a year or $5 a month to strip those commercials. All right, so now that we got the price out of the way, let's take a look at a few other things. So the next thing that I believe is important when you're picking your streaming services is what devices does it play on? As of last month, they did expand their compatibility a little bit here. So they just opened it up to Amazon Fire devices, but the compatibility is pretty wide. It does work on a vast number of devices from video game systems, smart TVs, it works on your Roku's, now works on your Amazon Fire devices, Apple uh, devices, so it actually works on quite a few devices, so I think you can go ahead and check that off for the most part. I also do believe it's a pretty user-friendly application, which we will jump into here in a little bit, so that I think is definitely important to make sure that it's easy to use and easy for you to find stuff. Now that does bring me to my next point, what's on the service? Like I said before, you're gonna find a lot of the NBC branded content, you're gonna find some of your NBC Sports. And I did compile a little bit of a list here to kind of give us a basic idea. Now, this isn't concrete info, this is just based on my findings, but here's what I came across. I do believe they have a total of 1,000 movies. They have about 511 TV shows. Of those 511 TV shows, I came across 38 originals. That is one of the important things with us choosing our streaming services. Originals are becoming a big thing now, and most people are choosing what streaming services they prefer based on those originals. So having 38 of them isn't a huge number, but there are quite a few that pique my interest, and they may pique your interest as well. Just to name a few, there's Punky Brewster, Intelligence, which actually just came out with their second season, Saved by the Bell, Brave New World, Rutherford Falls. You might also find it interesting that you will get their emails every month, which actually gives you a pretty cool list of what shows and movies are coming to the platform that month. They do break it down day by day, so you can see a list of what's coming each day. So you have a heads up of, uh, of what's gonna be on there to see if you wanna continue subscribing any further if you are on a month to month plan. Now also important to note, we will check it out when we go over to the TV, but there are 53 live channels that I came across. Now, some of those channels I wouldn't necessarily call them a live channel. They are doing what some of the other live TV services are doing where it's a channel of just a particular TV series that's played 24 seven with episodes over and over and over again. It's a cool concept, but I wouldn't necessarily call that a live channel. They do have a few of those mixed in with the 53 number that I came up with. So 53 is not a huge number, but if you don't have another live TV service, it's nice that they do throw that in there for you. Now they did recently unveil a kid's profile. I don't think it's fully customized like some of the other services allow you to kind of pick age ranges and things like that. It just gives you a basic profile that you can put a pin on the adult profile and have the kids click into their kid's profile and be able to watch kid-friendly content. I do believe when you set it up, it does show you it's gonna have a certain rating and below. Um, so it definitely gives that, that nice option of having that, but it's just not very customizable, but it, it does have the option. All right guys, let's go ahead and jump in and just take a look at the user interface. We're gonna be going ahead and taking a look at it here on the Roku TV today. It does function pretty much the same across all platforms, but we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it here right now. Now, just a heads up, I am going to mute the TV just in case we click on anything live. I don't want any type of copyright or have to you know, change the video at all. So it is going to be muted so you won't hear anything from the TV, but there's nothing that we really should need to hear. So I'll just show you real quick here. Of course, when you go in, you do have your options of your user profiles here. I believe you can have a total of five. Don't quote me on that, but I think you can have a total of five. When you go to make a new profile, you do have a couple avatars that you can choose from. And then of course, after you click your avatar, it's going to ask if it's a kid's profile. Um, and then uh, from there, it's going to just have you name it. And that's really all there is. Now you can do a little bit more customization over on the website, but it doesn't give you a whole lot to customize. When you do choose an adult profile, it does ask you your birth date and then it asks you your gender and it asks you your zip code. I'm assuming for the sports related content, but 
it does ask you those questions just so you know. Let's take a look at the kids profile real fast. So you'll notice it says Peacock Kids up at the top. And it's just going to have everything that is kid friendly. So you got some featured movies, you got ages 2 to 5, ages 6 to 12. You got some recommendations, and it's going to give you some categories of things to watch. So it's pretty basic, but it's nice that it has that option. When you go over to the main profile or an adult profile, it's going to give you everything up at the top. Let's go ahead and start over with channels. So channels is going to be your live TV option here. Now, if you guys didn't check out the full review that I made when this first came out, make sure to head over and check out the full review. And if you guys do want to see a more in-depth review now that it's been out for a while, let me know down below and we'll go ahead and check that out. So now it pulled up just a live channel here. It looks like there's uh, some golf on, so it pulled up that channel. I can go ahead and hit the down button and it's going to allow me to scroll through the guide and see what else is on. You may notice it does also show some things like this actually says on demand, so it's not actually live. Let's just go ahead and pick something else. And there you go. It's pretty basic. It's not going to be your best live TV service, but it's nice that it does throw it in. So you have that option. Let's go ahead and go back. We're going to go back over to browse up at the top here. And it's nice to see that it has a Latino. I don't think that there's that many other streaming services that I've tested that actually has a Latino category. So it's nice to see that they do have that option uh, for anyone that wants that. Let's quickly jump in there and you can just kind of take a look here. It's going to kind of feature some of the content across the Latino category. Then of course you can go down, break it down to some other categories here. So it's just nice to see that they give the option there. And there doesn't seem to be any shortage of Latino content. If you go over to news, you're going to see again some of the featured news. You got your top headlines, you got featured channels, latest episodes, NBC News, The Choice. So I mean, there is no shortage of news if you want to catch up on any of your NBC related news. If we head over to WWE, you're going to see that they have some originals, featured series recently added, they got pay-per-view specials. I mean, if you're a WWE fan, this is one of the places to be because they have a lot of stuff on here. And I was reading that they have plans coming next month, I believe it is, to have even more WWE Originals coming only to uh, Peacock here. So definitely keep an eye out for any of those. I know there's going to be a, some kind of documentary series. So definitely no shortage of WWE content, both new and old. If you go ahead and check out the sports section here, I haven't really checked out the sports too much. If you guys would like to see a separate sports video kind of breaking down what's on here, let me know down below and I can definitely put something together. As of right now, it looks like they have um, the Tour de France and a couple other things that are coming up right now. I know we're kind of at the, uh, the end of the season for a lot of uh, the sports right now, but they do have a few uh, live things that are going on and that are upcoming. But there's a lot of highlights and a lot of other stuff they have in here. You got your motocross, your golf, you got motorsports, does have some NASCAR highlights, you got your beyond the game in the spotlights. So I mean there there's definitely a lot of sports content on here. I just haven't gone through it to see what it actually has. So let me know if you guys would like me to uh, break that down a bit further. And if there's any particular sports you're looking at, let me know. Heading back up, if you just hop over to TV shows.
like I said, it's just going to break down your different categories, but I like that it has just added, so that way you can see some of the new stuff, and then you're going to break down if you want to watch comedy or, you know, whatever genre you're into. It's got a lot of those. You got your Peacock Originals there. So, definitely a nice way to break everything down. Same thing with the movies. I know they have a lot of categories, so we're not going to go through all the different categories there, but they definitely have a lot to choose from. One of the things that I liked when I've done some of my previous videos is that Peacock does a really good job at giving you the holiday category. So if there's a particular holiday coming up that they have a lot of shows or movies for, if it's Halloween or Christmas or something else, make sure to check out Peacock because they definitely come out with a lot of categories for your holiday movies, so they make it very easy to find. And I think that that's one of the things that I've really enjoyed with Peacock is the fact that they do break things down into easy to find categories so that way you can find what you're looking for. Well, that's what that's all there really is as far as taking a look at the interface here. So, some final thoughts. I mean, I think Peacock's a great service. They definitely uh, give you the categories to find things. I do like that it has some of the, uh, the live TV on there. So it's definitely a good service to try out. It's great that they have the free plan. So definitely just hop on that free plan and, and give it a shot. You have nothing to lose. They don't ask for a credit card or anything like that. You can just go ahead and sign up for that free plan and just check it out and see what it's got. But it definitely doesn't have the biggest library of content there's other services out there that have a lot more content, so you may get more bang for your buck with some of the other ones, but if you decide to just keep the free tier on here, then no harm, no foul. You get some free content out of the deal, and if you decide that it's worth paying uh, an extra few bucks to be able to get the bigger library or even uh, extra few bucks more to get the no ads, then you definitely have those options. But I would certainly give it a shot on that free plan and see what you think. So let me know your thoughts. If you guys have tried out Peacock TV or if you th are thinking of trying it, let me know down below. Take a look at some of those originals and let me know if there's anything you guys think you're interested in watching. And let me know down below, what's your streaming service of choice? If you guys would like to see me do some more Peacock TV videos, let me know in the comments down below. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you're able to get something out of this. If there's anything I forgot to mention, I'll leave it in the description down below. If you notice anything that I forgot, leave it in the comments down below. But if you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you guys haven't already subscribed, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you get notified of any new videos to come out. You can also follow the links on the screen to the older videos. Don't forget to share this video across any social media platform that you like. And until next time, guys, stay nerdy.